Oh, hello. Hey, this is David with Mudslinger Pottery here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'm out in the studio today and I'm hopefully going to uh, make another YouTube video. So uh, thank you for uh, everyone who subscribed. Thank you for joining me today. And I need to apologize to uh, the people who've been subscribed and have been following me. I've kind of been off the grid for a little while. Uh, December, I had surgery. And so it was a month and a half before I was back. And now I feel like I'm back 100% and uh, just so glad I, I'm beyond that. Um, I'm also working with a new camera and it's uh, a little more advanced than, than my technical skills. So it's taken me a little while to figure it out and I felt it was best to wait till I knew how to use this camera instead of falling back on the other ways I videoed so that I would keep using it and hopefully produce better videos. And, and the nice thing about this camera is it's got a facial recognition, so it will follow me wherever, wherever I go and follow my face. I don't have a cameraman back there pointing it and keeping it, you know, where, keeping it on my face. So today I'm gonna to be talking about making consistent pots. And what I mean by that is making pots the same size or pretty darn close. Now these, I didn't do any of the tricks that I'm gonna tell you to do, but um, if you've been making pots for a long time, you can kind of figure it out and the muscle memory and just the same size and shape is, is a little easier to make. If you're a little new to it, there are a couple tricks that will help you get closer to the same size. Now normally I don't worry about the same size, um, particularly with my mugs. I will use different weights of clay and make different size mugs because every time I go out to a sale, if I bring all big mugs, that's going to be the day that someone says, oh, they're all too big, I need a smaller one. And if I walk out there with all small mugs, that's going to be the day that someone says, oh, I really want a really big mug. So it, it helps me to have different sizes and different shapes of the handle, a little bigger, a little smaller, because everyone's hand's a little different and everyone's taste is a little bit different. But I'm working on a, a wholesale order and I want to get them fairly close. So I'm going to show you, share, you, share with you a couple of the tips that help me. So number one, I've created a board with all the pots that I make and I've added the weights for them. So that if someone orders from me a mug and then six months later they want more mugs, I can go back to my board and it will tell me basically how much, how much clay I, I used for it. Um, the other thing is an electronic scale because although the needle scales are fine, this one will get it down to the exact number, which is very nice to be using the same amount of clay for the pots you're making. If you're an ounce or two off, it will make a difference in the size of your pots. So I recommend when you, when you are making a project, cut out the same amount of clay, measure it, weigh it, so they are all the same size balls when you get ready. The other thing I'm gonna use is a straw. And I know you're like, how are you gonna make more consistent pots with a straw? But I'm gonna show you in just a minute when I turn the camera around and get down here on the wheel. So let me get to moving the camera and we'll get to work and I'll show you what I'm doing. So thanks. Okay, so I'm back on the wheel and I've thrown one of my chopstick bowls. The uh, chopsticks will, will lay across the top and that's uh, a shape and design that I've come up with. So I started with the same amount of clay. I made a number of 
balls of clay, all 1.5, one pound, five ounces, so that I'm starting with the same thing. The other thing you want to do is you want to use the same tools. You don't want to change tools while you're throwing this. So everything you can do to make this pot more consistent down to the, the way you throw it, the consistency of the clay, if you can use clay from the same box, that's always a good thing because sometimes clay is a little uh, wetter or a little drier and that will change how, um, how you can throw that pot. So, I don't know, you're waiting. Where's, where's the straw thing? Okay, so here's my straw. And this one's thrown, this one's right size for what I'm looking for. So what I want to do is work the next one and I want to come up to the same size and the same diameter. So if I can set a point right here, that will tell me the height and the diameter, diameter of this pot. So all I have to do is stick a piece of clay on the side of my, my bat and work it in here till I get the right angle and that straw will point to where I want my pot to come to and that's what I'll work towards. So let me get this one off and not hit the straw and we'll work on the next one. So I have a bat system that works really nice. You can see that this piece stays down and then I use a smaller piece that fits in the indentation and this is nice for for my shop because I don't have a whole lot of room for my studio because then I'm just I've got the pots on this. So let's go ahead and see how this works out. You'll see uh, production potters who have a, a little, little more elaborate system than just a straw. But as I said earlier, I don't normally care if one's a little bigger or a little smaller. Um, because everyone has their taste. Everyone likes one thing more or less than another. So. Some would like a little smaller ramen bowl, and some would like a little larger ramen bowl. So because they basically take the same amount of time, the same amount of work, I charge the same price, even if they're a little different. So now when I go in and open it up, the other thing I want to be conscious of is how deep I'm going. If, if one has a one inch foot, and the other one has a quarter of an inch foot, then I'm leaving a lot of clay down in the bottom there and my pot is not going to be consistent. It's going to be harder for me to get up to that point or maybe it'd be past that point. So I want to try to get a consistent bottom so I'm using all that clay. So that's why I use the, the needle tool to measure it as good as I can and then start throwing. So basically the first throw I'm just trying my best to uh, thin out the clay, stretch it up and even it out as much as possible. I'm not coming too far out into the bowl shape. That'll be a little bit later. And I can already feel a bubble here. this issue here. Let's hope that does it. 
So I take a damp sponge and just run it on the inside of the pot and that will give me enough moisture so that I can make a pool without it causing problems. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on the, the straw and where I want this pot. And I'm also pulling it out a little bit. So I'm pretty close right there. So I will clean up my foot. stiff metal ribs to do the final shaping and push this pot out just a little bit further maybe just a little higher see how that's working like a guide to show me the size of the pot. And I will clean it up once more. Try to get a nice line down through here. That's pretty close. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. But I don't want them too far off. So let me cut this one off. This out of the way, and we'll see how the two of them compare. I saw this trick from another potter, and I kind of like it. So I use the sponge to just clean up the extra clay on the bat, and that. Uh, just helps cut down on the dust in my studio. So here's the two pots side by side. I'd say that's not too bad. I mean, after all, they are handmade. So thanks for watching. This has been David with Mudslinger Pottery here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I hope you uh, got something out of that. And if you got questions, please, uh, Drop me a note in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like and hit the subscribe and hopefully I can get back out here and get my camera figured out and get some more videos with some more information. So thanks once again. Hope everyone has a wonderful day. Y'all take care.